بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Last week we started uh, with the interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Adam alayhi salam and the interaction between Allah and the malaika, the angels uh, and Adam and this week we will continue on with that. Uh, we said last week how the angels uh, were mistaken and that they assumed Adam السلام, was going to, you know, not do as good as Allah SWT knew he was going to do. Um, and then after Allah SWT made it clear to them, Adam kullaha, when Allah taught Adam all of the names and he repeated them to the malaika and taught the malaika, then they knew, قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا that there's no knowledge except that which you have taught us, O Allah. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Verily, you are the all-knowledgeable, the all-wise. And the wisdom we said is putting things in the proper place and also in judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, hikmah, al-hakim, and the hukum. He puts the justice and the rulings in the proper order. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> Uh, says to the Malaika, so we stopped last week, we finished the ayah uh, 33, we start today inshallah with ayah 34. قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْتُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْرِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we said to the angels, and last week we discussed what the angels are, how they are, what they do. They commanded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He said to them to make sujood to Adam فَسَجَدُوا so they all bowed down except Iblis he refused and was arrogant and he was from the disbelievers um, in this ayah there are many uh, blessings and benefits that we can learn from first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech that he speaks he has the sifat of or the attribute of kalam because he spoke to the angels. We said to the angels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, a voice, he speaks, he can be heard, and he hears. He commanded them to make sujood to Adam. طيب. Sujood originally is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, correct? What is sujood? Prostration, right? Going down to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you make sujood to something other than Allah, what is that called? Shirk. It's a form of shirk, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not command shirk. So how do we put this together with the ayah? In Allah la la ya'mru bil fahsha. Allah does not encourage or order or command anything of haram or shirk or kufr or fahsha, right? So how do we reconcile these two? Sujood to other than Allah is shirk, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's ordering the angels to make sujood to Adam. Because you know, Allah ordered it, you know. Very good, because Allah commanded it. So anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands becomes an ibadah because you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not worshipping the angels, you're worshipping Allah by following His commands. Can somebody give me an example in the Quran of something similar to that? where in general it's prohibited but when Allah commands it it becomes a form of worship sujood so, uh, to Yusuf um, yeah that wasn't a command to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it's a similar thing um, also in the previous sh sh uh, laws sharia it was permissible to do the greetings with bowing so they did out of bow out of respect for, for Yusuf I know one difficult what is that one Yes, that is right. Khidr with the story of Musa alayhi salam because in general, murder is haram. Murdering the innocent is haram. But Khidr was commanded to do so and then it became a form of worship for him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? because he's following the commands of Allah. Also, um, and it's not called murder obviously if you're following the commands of Allah. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham was commanded to sacrifice his son. Right? Of course, this is not permissible in general, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders it, it becomes a form of ibadah. So in this sense here, 
the sujood, you'll find some mufassirin, we're going to read in tafsir inshallah, they say different things, but the correct opinion in the Quran when a, a word is used, we take it at face value unless it's proven otherwise. Right, so we don't have to make a ta'wil or explanation that sujood doesn't mean sujood or, or something like that. We can say yes, it means sujood, but it's commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore it's not a form of shirk because they're doing it for not worshipping Adam, but out of following the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب فسجد إلا إبليس except إبليس let me read the tafsir and we'll come back to the commenting inshaAllah فسجد الملائكة كلهم أجمعون all the angels made sujood to Adam this is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars was Iblis uh, from the angels or not. Um, وقالوا استجدوا في قولان الأصح أن السجود كان لآدم على الحقيقة So the statement of making prostration, commanding Allah commanding the angels to make sujood is upon the true meaning like we just discussed. And another, um, In this case, it contains the meaning that you are worshipping Allah by following his commands. So you're not worshipping the angels, the angels are not worshipping Adam, they're worshipping Allah by following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ سُجُودُ تَعَذِيمٌ وَالتَّحِيَّةٍ لَا سُجُودُ عِبَادًا Another sujood uh, is like the sujood of Yusuf, إِخْوَةُ uh, يُوسُفُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَخَرُّ لَهُ سُجَّدًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ وَضَعَ الْوَجْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ إِنَّمَا كَانَ الْإِنْحِنَاء فَلَمَّا جَاءَ الْإِسْلَامِ أَبْطَلَ ذَلِكَ بِالسَّلَامِ um, so in the past, it was not prostration, but it was like a bowing out of form of respect. Even today, in some Asian cultures or um, Eastern cultures, they bow when they greet each other, right? This was something permissible in the previous Sharia, but it was explained, uh, abrogated with this, with the salam in our in our Sharia, right? Instead of bowing to one, we say salam alaikum. So some scholars say they try to make tawil of sujood that it's like a form of bowing or greeting, but the correct opinion is that it's. A complete sujood, but it's commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we following Allah's command is a form of worship. And then some, some others say, As sujood li Adam, as sujood li Adam, a ila Adam, fakana Adam qiblatan, wa sujood li lahi ta'ala, kama joy ila tin ka'aba qareed, a qiblatan li salati, wa salati li lahi azza wa jal. So when other scholars they say that sujood in this meaning was towards Adam, not to Adam. And Adam was like the Kaaba, just like we make sujood towards the Kaaba to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another tafsir. But like we said, the original meaning of sujood is taken at face value. It means like prostration, but it's not a form of shirk because Allah commanded it. So it's a form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the angels. فَسَجِدُوا يَعْنِي الْمَلَائِكَ إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ وَكَانَ إِسْمُ أَزَائِزِيلِ Some say it, or Azariel in certain languages. Uh, we're not... Authentically, 100% sure if that name is true or not, but we know Shaitan, we know Iblis. Asa, uh, he basically sinned against Allah Subhanahu wa And he says, Iblis, لِيَنَّهُ أَبْلَسَ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى اي يَا إِسَى He's called Iblis because he gave up from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness and uh, uh, basically acceptance. He turned away from it. Ablasa, right? So he gave up any hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ فَقَالَ إِبْنُ عَبَّاسُ رَلِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَكْثَرَ الْمُسْرَسِلِينَ كَانَ إِبْلِيسَ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَقَالَ الْحَسَنَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسِقَ عَمْنِ رَبِّي فَهَلْ أَصْلُ الْجِنِّ كَمَا أَنَا آدَمَ أَصْلُ الْإِنْسِ وَلِنُهُ خَلَقَ مِنْ نَارٍ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ خُلِقَ مِنْ نُورٍ so the difference of the scholars in this ayah, some say that Iblis, because of this ayah, was from the angels. Um, and he used to be like worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, right? Um, and others say that, no, he's from the jinn. Because Allah says in Surah Al-Kaf, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسِقَ عَنْ أَمْضِ رَبِّي Right? So what do you guys think? Or what do your tafsir, is he from the angels or he's from the jinn? From the jinn, why? Because he says, I'm in a jinn, Allah said, Allah said. Okay. Right, mashallah. So one of the proofs the scholars use is that angels don't sin. Um, what else? We say angels are created from? 
from nur, from light, and then shaitan or iblis or shayateen are created from nar, fire or smokeless fire, right? Also, the malaika, they don't procreate, they don't have children, but the jinn and the human beings, we have children. So, in Iblis alayhi salam, they are astaghfirullah alayhi na'ala Allah, a'udhu billah min ash-shaytan al-jinn. Iblis <laughs> Yes, they say that Iblis <laughs> was from the ones who, uh, he's like the father of the jinn, some say, as Adam is the father of humanity. Um, Wallahu a'lam. So, those are some of the reasons that they say, and Allah says in the surah, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسْقَ عَنَ أَمْنِ رَبِّي That he is from the jinn, and he deviated from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he says, وَذْخُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكِ اِسْجُلُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا Because most of the um, creations or the people that Allah subhanahu wa was talking to or the things that Allah subhanahu wa was talking to at the time were the angels. So he didn't, Allah in, in the Balagha, in the Arabic language, you don't have to get too technical and say that Allah commanded all of the jinn and all of the angels and etc. and Iblis etc. No, because he says it to the most of the company that Allah is talking to is the angels, right? So they're the ones that were commanded to make sujood. But Iblis was with them. So Iblis, he spent a lot of time with the angels because he was always in the past worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, he had some corruption in his heart, right? The angels, they have, they're pure of heart. They don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the jinn and the human beings, we have hearts that can change, right? Like we said last time, Right, if there's a morsel of less flesh in the body, if it's correct, then all the body is correct, meaning all the actions are correct. And if it's corrupt, all the actions will be corrupt. The Prophet says, verily, it is the heart. Right? So the scholars they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never you know, misguide someone that does not deserve to be misguided, and nobody will be worshipping Allah sincerely and go astray like this. So therefore, the scholars, they derived that Iblis, he had something in his heart, sirri and khafiya of ma'asiyah or shirk or kibr or something like that, right? A sickness of the heart that was brewing. So even if he, like they said, he worshipped on every single spot to worship Allah in the past, but he was doing it mostly to show off, right? And he had this sickness that came out when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do something, he... Aba was takbara, refused and had kibr, arrogance. Right? So that's why it's very important for us as human beings not to follow the path of the shayateen. If we have any type of like sickness in our heart, it's so important to purify it. Because in another narration, it could happen to people as well. Uh, right? Right, that a person will be doing the actions of the people of Jannah until there's not but a hand spent between him and Jannah. And then he will start doing the actions of the people of the hellfire and he will be entered into the hellfire, thrown into the hellfire. Right? In another narration, it says, nas, the actions he's doing apparently in front of the people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never put somebody in the hellfire unjustly. But inside, the sir, the khafiyah, he has some corruption in the heart. Maybe he's doing the ibadat out of arrogance. Maybe he's doing the show off to people. Maybe he's a hypocrite, right? So apparently he looks like, wow, mashallah, he's doing all these good deeds, he's giving charity, he's reciting Quran, etc., etc. But inside, only Allah knows, he has some type of corruption, and that's why Allah will enter him to the hellfire. So the warning here is not to be like Iblis. The malaika, see how they bowed immediately to Adam alayhi salam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them. In Iblis, what happened? Stakbara, right? He was arrogant. Aba, refuse. The mu'min, the Muslim, were used to saying to Allah azza wa jal, sami'na wa ta'na. Right? We hear and we obey. We don't have this like arrogance of like, oh, what does this mean? Or why should I pray four rakats instead of six? Or why should I, you know? No. Allah says, we say sami'na wa ta'na. Right? That's taslim. That means you have salamat al-qalb, that your heart is clean and, and acceptance of Allah Subhanahu's commands. Iblis, like we said, he was a fervent worshiper, but that was the zahir, that was the outer appearance. Inside, there was some corruption in his heart, and that's why when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded him, Aba was takbara. He refused and he had uh, arrogance. Wa kana min al-kafirin, and 
he was of the uh, disbelievers. Kana, the word kana, it doesn't only mean like in the past, right? It can be something like continuous state to describe someone in continuous state. Anybody know the Arabic language or something else that can prove that for me? From the Quran specifically? That kana doesn't just mean just the past. Kana Allahu Ghafur al Rahima or Alim al Hakima, right? All these different ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't that he was, he was before like only mercy and then he stopped being merciful. No. It means Allah is in continuous state of rahmah, mercy, and hikmah, wisdom, right? And, and ilm, knowledge, right? And forgiveness. Continuous, right? So in this state too, uh, Iblis became in a continuous state of kufr, right? Even if he was to repent, Allah would have forgiven him, but because of his arrogance and his disobedience, he refused to repent. repent and he remained in the state of the kafirin. طيب the next ayah وقلنا يا دمسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه شجرة فتكونا من الظالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says let me finish sorry the other ayahs أبا امتنع فلم يشد إبليس he refused did not make sujood was takbara, takabara and sujood to Adam. He was so arrogant to make sujood to Adam. You know, he said in the ayah, you created me from fire, you created him from a clay. In his mind, he's using logic. Why should fire bow down to clay? I'm better than Adam, right? So he had that arrogance in him, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better than all of us. So if he commands, we obey. He became from the kafirin. Some scholars say, وَكَانَ فِي سَابَقِ عِلْمِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ الَّذِينَ وَجَبَتْ لَهُمْ السَّقَاءَةَ That it was in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would be from the kafirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, you know, ilm al-azari, permanent knowledge. But like I said, other scholars, they say that, can also can describe someone in a continuous state of kufr. طَيْبُ خُدْنَا لِيَادَمْ سْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجِكَ الْجَنَّةِ وذلك أن آدم لم يكن له في الجنة من يح يجانسه فنام نومة فخلق الله زوجته حواء من قصيرا من شقه الأيسر وصميت حواء لأنها خلقت من حي خلقها الله عز وجل من غير أن أحس بها آدم ولا وجده ألما. so الله سبحانه وتعالى يس Yes, Kibber. Nah. So the brother Zahlo here is reminding me of a hadith of the Prophet to describe what is arrogance. Um, and because one of the companions, he had bought some nice uh, shoes and he was fearing to be from the arrogant ones, like he didn't want to be showing off. And then the Prophet said, You know, in Allah Jamil, you have Jamal, that Allah is beautiful, He loves things that are beautiful. So he's meaning that it's okay to get this. In the Mal Kibber, Batr al Haqi. That it's refusing the truth or this, you know, denying the truth and looking down upon the people. And at least he had both of these characteristics, right? He denied the truth when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to bow down and he looked down upon Adam, right? So this root of arrogance also, we can say that anybody who is a racist is sharing an attribute with Iblis, right? Because he's looking down upon somebody else solely for the color of their skin, or what tribe they're from, or what ethnicity they are. And that's haram. That's from the fears of jahiliyyah, and that's from the sunnah of the shaytan, Iblis, alayhi la'natullah. Jazakallah khair. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told to Adam to go live with you, with your wife in Jannah. And the Imam al-Baghwi rahimahullah ta'ala, he's describing that Adam was by himself, um, and he didn't have any company. So when he slept, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for him his companion, Hawa. Right? And she's called Hawa. Uh, he created, she, in the narration, she was created from actually the rib of Adam, his left, from his left side. And she was called Hawa because she is created from a living being. Right? And this is from the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if you look at the forms of creation, you can have Adam alayhi salam. He was created from what? Mud. Dirt, mud. No father, no mother, right? 
Hawa was created from a male. Basically, she was taken from a piece from Adam and Allah created Hawa. So you have those two different types. And then you have Isa alayhi salam. He was created from a female, Maryam alayhi salam, with no father, right? And then you have all of the rest of humanity was created from man and woman. And this is to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadir ala kulli shay, that he's capable of everything. You know, in the mayaqul, kun fayakun. He just says, be and it is. Right? So he's showing to us, you know, when people say that, oh, Jesus is a miracle. He's, you know, even you Muslims admit that he's born from the Virgin Mary. Why don't you accept him as God or Son of God or Trinity? We say, okay, Adam was a greater miracle. He was not created from father or mother. Right? Or Hawa, Eve, she was created from Adam. Right? These are all miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. doesn't mean that they are gods or sons of gods or daughters of gods. Right? It's a miracle from Allah. Tayyip. And it said it did not cause Adam any uh, pain. MashaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that when he cre- took from his part to create Hawa, it didn't cause Adam any pain. And this shows that man and woman are created in pairs. You know, that we have spouses for one another. We created for one another, from one another, to be a comfort to each other. Because Adam was alone in, in Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for him a spouse to keep him company and give him comfort. And that's from the wisdoms of marriage for humanity, right? To have company, to have rahmah, to have love, to procreate, and to not be alone. فَقَالَ لَهَا مَنْ أَنْتِ So Adam, when he was woken, when he woke up and he saw her sitting next to him, and he said that she, uh, he saw her in the most beautiful of light. She looked very beautiful and pleasing to his eyes. He said, who are you? And she said, I am your wife. Ana zawjatik. Khalaqani Allahu laka taskun ilayya wa askun ilayk. Allah created me for you so that you may um, basically give me company and I can give you company. Or sakina, basically to take peace from me and I take peace from you. Right? So this is the purpose of a wife or the husband in general. To give peace and comfort to one another. Right? Not to have enmity, not to cause hardship, not to cause stress, not to cause, you know, problems, but to be a comfort for one another. If we can remember this in marriage, inshallah, we will have a better life with our spouses. That this is a trust that Allah gave to me. She is a comfort for me, and I am a comfort for her. How can I be a comfort to her? How can she be a comfort for me? A lot of times people only look at themselves, how they can comfort themselves, and then they end up hurting their families. But no, Allah is showing us that He created... Adam alayhi salam, a spouse so that it can be comfort for one another. Tayyip. Wa kula minha ragadan. Allah is saying to them, now that Adam, Allah created Adam and Eve to live into Jannah, He said to eat um, from wherever you may, right? Haythu shittuma. Ragadan is like wasi'an kathiran, a lot. So this is another indication that. Um, they are in the true Jannah. Because we may discuss in the tafsir that some scholars say that it's not the Jannah that's going to go, that we're going to go to after, inshallah, we pass away as Muslims. But it's a different garden, you know, that Allah created temporarily for Adam. Right? But the correct opinion is that it is the true Jannah, or part of the true Jannah. And we will uh, go back to that. Because there's so much in there and they can eat from anything. Haythu shittuma, from anywhere that you want. Allah is telling them to eat and drink and have whatever you want from anywhere in this Jannah except لا تقرب هذه الشجرة except don't get close to this tree يعني للأكل um, for eating basically and there's a difference of opinion of what kind of tree this is you know is it sumbila is it like a wheat tree or is it an anab شجرة العنب a grape tree or uh, teen you know, uh, tea, what do you call it, uh, fig tree or apple, etc., etc. It really doesn't matter. It's just a tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know for sure what it was, the different tabasir. But the point is, Allah forbade them from going close to this one particular tree, right? And then some say, the tree of knowledge. Um, like I said, many different tabasir, but in general, it's a tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forbade for Adam and Hawa to get close to. But they disobeyed. Uh, 
So Allah is telling him, don't get close to this tree. Don't come close to it. Don't eat from it. Because you will be from the unjust ones or the unjust ones. You're going to do harm to yourself. Right? So Allah is warning them. That you will hurt yourself with sinfulness. Because basically, um, الظلم, like the Imam says, شيء في غير موضعه. ظلم, injustice, injustice is putting something in its improper place. We said hikmah is putting something in its proper place. The opposite is dhulm, when you put something in its improper place. So the Imam in the tafsir is saying that how will you become dhalimeen, how will you become unjust? Because you are doing ma'asiyah, sinfulness, which is not properly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And any sin that we do is a form of dhulm to ourselves. Right? Either in this dunya or in the akhirah. So we're going to get punished for it if we don't make tawbah or we get to go in this dunya or we'll be punished in the akhirah with you know whatever punishment Allah chooses. So sin, not only from the punishment aspect, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He commands, anything He tells you to stay away from, there is some type of harm in it, whether we know it or not. Right? So if we do that sin, we're actually harming ourselves literally, harming ourselves with the sin and harming ourselves with the potential of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. And then Allah says, فَأَزَلْهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجُهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَ فِيهِ وَقُلْنَا اهْبِطُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرُّ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينَ فَأَزَلْهُمَا أَسْتَنْزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ آدَمُ حَوَى The Adam, uh, Shaytan, he caused Adam and Hawa to be removed from uh, Jannah. Because he called them Azilla is like a mistake, right? Or shaking, you know, zilzala is like when the whole earth is shaking. A mistake is when you fall short with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shaitan or shayateen or shaitan, like we said, is from shatana, a ba'da. It's went away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience. It went away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. وَسُمْيَ بِهِ لِبُعْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ rahma. And shaitan was called that because he was far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from any goodness. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah, mercy. So, anha, akhrajuhuma, fa'azalumah shaytanu anha, anha, al janna, fa'akhrajuhuma mimma kana fi, min al na'im. So, the shaytan caused them to be taken out from what they were in of the na'im, of pleasure. Imagine you have, you're in jannah basically, everything you want, everything you can eat. No, you know, harm, no tiredness, no suffering, everything. And then, you disobey Allah and you're caused to be expelled from there. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ أَبْلِيسِ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَدْخُلْ لِيُوَسْوَسَ إِلَىٰ آدَمْ وَحَوَىٰ فَمَنَعْتُهُ خَزَنَةً فَأَتَىٰ نَحِيَّةً وَكَانَتْ صَدِيقَةً لِأَبْلِيسِ وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْأَحْسَنِ الدَّوَابِ لَهَا أَرْبَعَ قَوَاتِهِمْ قَوَاتِهِمْ لَبَعِيرِ وَكَانَتْ مِنْ خَزَائِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَسَأَلَهَا إِبْلِيسِ أَنْ تَدْخُلُ فَمَهَا فَأَدْخَلَتْهُ وَمَرَّتْ بِهِ عَلَى الْخَزَنَةِ وَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ فَأَدْخَلَتْهُ الْجَنَّةِ This is one of the stories that they're saying that basically Iblis tried to get to them, but he couldn't, so he sent a snake, which is a companion of the shaitan, to get to Adam and tell them to go eat from this uh, shajra. And before, the animals of Jannah were something that are like beautiful and obedient, so uh, he's saying that Adam and Hawa listened to the snake and went and um, ate from that tree. That's one tafsir. But the clear tafsir is that the shaitan himself misguided them, right? And another narration, it says that uh, let me see if it's here. فَلَمَّا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةَ وَقَفَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ آدَمُ وَحَوَى وَهُمَا لَا يَعْلِمَانِ أَنَّهُ إِبْلِيسِ فَبَكَى وَنَاحَ وَنَاحِيَةٍ أَحَزَنَتْهُمَا So he's, this narration is saying that a shaitan came in there and they didn't know that that was Iblis, right? And he was crying, crying so much that it made them feel sad for him. وَهُوَ أَوْلَ مَنْ نَاحِ Nah is like crying with like screaming almost too and the shaitan is the, only one, is the first one to do such. And then he said, uh, they said to him, مَا يُبْكِيكَ Why are you crying? قَالَ أَبْكِي عَلَيْكُمَا تَمُوتَانِ فَتُفَارِقَانِ مَا أَنْتُمَا فِيهِ مِنَ النِّعْمَةِ He said, I am crying because of you that you were both are going to die and you're going to leave this na'im that you're in, right? فَوَقَعَ ذَلِكَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمَا and this came entered into their hearts, Adam and Hawa. 
ثم أتاهما بعد ذلك وقال يا آدم هل أدلك على شجرة الخلد some time passed and then Iblis came back so he, he whispered this is how the shaitan works you know he whispers something a little bit gets people thinking about it and then he comes back a little bit more and then he comes back a little bit more until he gets the person right so he put this in there and he came in a nice way crying sad I'm so sorry for you you're gonna get kicked you're gonna die you're gonna get you're gonna get you know be away from each other you're gonna leave this beautiful place that you're in right and then he started thinking he put the doubt in their hearts already right and that doubt starts eating it away. Then he comes back to them and he says, Oh, uh, Adam, shouldn't I point you to a tree that will let you be forever? Stay here forever. At first, Adam and them, they refused. But then he swore in Qasim by Allah that he's from the Nasihin, from the good advisors, right? So they were fooled because they thought nobody would swear by Allah as, uh, and lie by it, right? They were still upon the fitrah, they're still innocent. But the shaitan, he's a deceiver, right? And he is an adu, he's an enemy. So after that, it says, Hawa went to the tree and ate um, from it. Badrat ila akli shajati thumma nawalat adam hatta akalaha. And then she gave it to Adam to eat from it, and he ate from it. What kind of... Uh, there's different tafasir, like I said, that some of them aren't so authentic. Um, it gets into like different stories, but basically, you get the gist of it that the shaitan tricked them, and they were deceived, right? And he started with a doubt, and that doubt built into action, right? That's why when, you know, Wiswas comes to you to do something wrong, or haram, immediately, you know, go back to Allah, Make istighfar, make dhikr, do some salihat to avoid that, right? So it gets out of your heart, gets out of your mind. And that's why also, just a side point, it's, it's encouraged for Muslims to stay away from the bad news or like the evil that people see that we are constantly bombarded with, right? Like about disgusting stuff in the news all the time, like you hear this stuff. Because it can go into the heart and corrupt the heart of the Muslim. Right, so some of the shiuch and the scholars, they say to not let that stuff enter into your hearts. Like the Muslim in general, he stays away from evil. Right? Fahsha' wal munkar, or these things, wal baghi. Because even listening to him too much, it can affect the heart of the Muslim. Right? So I understand sometimes it's good to, under, to know the news and know what's going on, but doing it every day or several times a day and seeing these images or hearing these things that we should not be hearing or listening to as Muslims is dangerous because then the shaitan can come and start putting the doubts and then it can start leading to other things, right? So we know that the eyes and the ears and the tongue, all these are gateways to the heart, right? So you have to have like soldiers guarding these eyes, these ears, this mouth every time so it doesn't get to the heart. And then it says that um, in narration, Ibn Abbas, وَقَتَادَ قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلِّ آدَمَ أَلَمْ يَكُنْ فِيمَا أَبْحَتُكَ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْدُوحَ عَنَ الشَّجَرَةِ It says that Allah says to uh, Adam and Hawa after they ate from the tree, didn't I give you enough space, you know, in Jannah, enough things in Jannah, enough provision in Jannah for you not to have eaten from that tree? قَالَ بَلَى يَا رَبْ وَعِزَّتِكَ وَلَكِنْ مَا ظَنَنْتُ أَنَّ أَحَدًا يَحْلَفْ بِكَ كَذِمًا Of course, O oh my Lord, by your honor, but I never thought that somebody would swear by you and lie, meaning the shaitan. قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِ أَحْبِتَنَّكَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ لَا تَنَالُ الْعَيْشِ إِلَّا كِدَّا He said, by my uh, honor, I will have to send you down to the earth and you will have basically a life of struggle, right? فَحْبَطَ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ So they both went down from the Jannah. وَكَانَ يَأْكُنَانِ فِيهَا رَغَدًا فُعْنِمَ صَنْعَةَ الْحَدِيدِ أُمِرَ بِالْحَرْثِ فَحُرِثَ فِيهَا وَزَرْعَ ثُمَّ سَقْرَ حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ حَصَدَ ثُمَّ دَاسَ ثُمَّ ذَرَهُ ثُمَّ طَحَنَهُ ثُمَّ عَجَنَهُ ثُمَّ خَبَزَهُ ثُمَّ أَكَلَهُ فَنَمْ يَبْلَغْ حَتَّى إِذَا and now they have to dig the earth, put the seed down, grow the plants, you know, harvest the plants, crush the grains to make the bread, and then to finally eat. So now, just to get a meal, they have to work hard for it. Whereas in Jannah, they were just given whatever they wanted, 
right? And this is because they chose to sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah warned them in the beginning and that's why the punishment was so severe, right? He told them, don't do it because if you do it, you will be from the dhalimeen. You'll be doing injustice to yourself, right? Allah warned them, but they still did it. وَقُلْنَا هَبِطُوا أَيْ أَنْزِلُوا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ Go down to the earth. يَعْنِي آدَمُ وَحَوَىٰ وَإِبْلِيسُ وَالْحَيَّةِ In this narration it says that Adam and Hawa and Iblis and the snake, they were all told to go back down to the earth. And then some say um, Adam was down upon the earth in a mountain in India and Hawa was in Jeddah in the Arabian Peninsula and Iblis was... Uh, farther off and the other the snake was in like Asfahan which is like Iranian 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 principle uh, basically all of you will be enemies to one another basically it's the enmity between Adam and humanity and the Iblis right Allah tells us from the beginning he is an enemy and take him as an enemy right that's why there's a chapter anybody know uh, Sun Tzu, or heard of Sun Tzu? Who is Sun Tzu? He's a writer. writer. From where? Do you know from where? Or from what time period? Or what he was about? Uh-huh. A general, yes. Uh-huh. A writer and a general. Sun Tzu was a famous general who wrote a book called The Art of War. Right? And in that book, one of the famous principles is know your enemy and know yourself and you will not be defeated even in a hundred battles. Right, So one of the ways that we can not be defeated by the shaitan Is to know his kaid, to know his plot, to know his evil right? Know ourselves if you, So his point is that the army If they just know themselves, they know their capabilities They know their strengths, they know their weaknesses But they don't know anything about the enemy They're still susceptible to defeat right? Because the enemy might be outnumbering them They might have more supplies, they might have more army They might have more technology, etc, etc Right? If they know the enemy, what they have, everything, what they can do, but they don't know themselves, what they're capable of, also they can be defeated. But if you know yourself, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know what you're good at, you know what you're bad at, you know how you can you know, advance and succeed, you know what your enemy's plot is, what their plan is, what their strengths, what their weaknesses are, then you can protect yourself properly. right? So the reason I brought that up is that we should know who the shaitan is. He declared openly he is an enemy to Allah and to humanity. Right? So anytime you disobey Allah to obey the shaitan, basically you're leaving someone who cares about you, loves you, created you, wants good for you, to go to someone who hates you. The moment Adam was created, the shaitan has a hatred towards him and to his offspring. And he swore by Allah that his mission in his life from the beginning of our creation until the last person on earth is to misguide humanity. Right? And Allah is telling us over and over, take him as an enemy, right? So like we said uh, in these ayat earlier, it started off with the whispering and then it led into action, right? So cut off the whispering of the shaitan before it leads you to the actions. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Uh, let me see, sorry, if I get to this. Adam Shaitan Basically the end part of the I didn't finish it, sorry, was that you have a place in the earth, mustaqarrun, like a place of qarar, a stability to take, live in uh, and do what you're supposed to do in, for a temporary period of time until your lifespan is over, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is merciful. Even though He took Adam salam and Hawa salam out of Jannah and put them on the earth, He still gave them a place of uh, istiqrar. Right, of a place to like kind of um, be habitable that you're able to live in and 
produce in, right? It's not something that's, you know, inhospitable like some of the other planets that we can't live on. You know, certain planets are too hot, too cold, the gravity is too great or too little, etc. But the earth is perfect for humanity, for us to achieve our mission, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pass through and to get into Jannah, inshallah, to go back to our original home, right? That's why we're striving. Like we don't feel comfortable in the dunya because it's not a permanent abode. You know, mata'an ila hin. Just a time, temporary time until its time is up. Right? So we're just passing through like travelers. Uh, another proof, the modern, some modern scholars, they say that وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ That earth is a place that's like habitable for you. They say by default that we're not supposed to live in other places than the earth. So there are actually some ulama that say that it's not correct for us to be spending so much effort and time and money and resources to try to go live on another planet because Allah said that it's وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ that your earth is your place of abode right now to take you live in, right? Is it a right opinion or right tafsir? Allah Alam, but I'm just saying so we can think about it is that from this ayat some scholars derive that. Um, the next ayah was going to talk about Toba, which is very important, inshallah. So I don't want to um, start it and have to t- uh, cut off. Adam Rabbi Kalimatin Inhu Rahim. That Adam learned some beautiful words from his Lord, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah accepted his repentance. Verily, Allah is the oft uh, accepting of repentance, and He is the most merciful. Right? Um, before we end, does anybody know what the kalimat is? One of those words that Allah taught Adam. Rabbana innana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana aw tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. Subhanak ya Allah. This is a beautiful dua that inshallah we'll go through next week. We'll stop here if you have any comments or. Uh, Additions, inshallah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question, subhanAllah. How do we differ between our own thoughts and the waswas of the shaitan? It takes time. In speech in general, you're talking about or anything? Okay. Hold on. Good? Go ahead. MashaAllah. Don't good think about it. No. That's a good uh, point. In general, so you have, subhanAllah, in the nafs al-amatul bisu also. The nafs sometimes, it can be of three categories, right? al nafs al-awama, al-amar bisu, wal mutma'inna, right? Nafs mutma'inna. So the one that is blaming itself, the one that is like uh, ordering with uh, bad things, and then one that's peaceful. And it has, like the Shaykh is saying, basically, what your thoughts, what your actions are mostly is going to form that type of nafs. So if a person is always indulging in haram or backbiting or evil, then he's going to have the one that's like encouraging him to do evil all the time, right? If he is taking account of himself, right, and constantly making toba, maybe he makes mistakes, but he gets himself, that's the lawama, right? If he's leaving the sin and having the higher thoughts of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, he is the mutma'inna, right? The believers, they They don't have any fear upon them from what's to come and they don't have huzn for what has passed because they're living a life of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A brother looks at him a certain way, you know, the one that has mutma'inna, he's like, mashallah, alhamdulillah, he probably, he has a bad day today, you know. The one that's like uh, the shaitan, he's like, awad billah, why do you look at me like that? He starts making dua against him or cursing him or whatever like that, right? No, the Muslim, mashallah, he's easy, simple, like good-hearted, pure-hearted, clean-hearted. So he assumes things in the best of nature. And he does, if, if they have, for example, somebody look at you in a bad way, right? And you, what, what can happen to you? Okay. You spend your whole day thinking about, oh, that guy looked at me bad. Oh, that guy, you know, he wants bad for me. Oh, blah, blah, blah. All you're doing that whole day is hurting yourself and wasting your time. And you don't even know for sure if that guy had. But if you just assume the best in your heart, and you think, you know, maybe, mashallah, the brother had a bad day, or come say salam, or make dua for the brother like that, and khalas, keep it going, you don't have any worries in your heart, you have no stress, you don't have no problems. So the thoughts are very powerful, right? And what you're thinking about and how you're thinking about is basically what you're feeding your nafs. 
So if you're feeling it, ta, citation of the Quran, husn al dhan, like good thoughts about others, right? Kalimat al tayyiba, the good speech, right? Kul khayran or If you're gonna speak, speak good or keep quiet, right? If you're following all these things, more likely, inshallah, you have training yourself to be a closer Muslim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not have a corrupted heart, right? But if you're falling into sin all the time, if you're looking at things you're not supposed to be looking at, if you're listening to things about you're not supposed to be listening to, if you're talking about things you shouldn't be talking about, whether it be lying, backbiting, you know, cursing all the time, doing foul things, then you're opening your heart to be corrupted by the shaitan. Did you want to say something, brother? Yeah, I just want to say there's a caveat in it. You know, sometimes shaitans come, Muslims can come in a right way. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> not always in a negative that can be also positive, so you have to recognize you know. that. That's a good point too. The shay, he, brother, brother mentioned you have to be careful. Like we said, so the shaitan, he is the greatest enemy of humanity because he's been from Adam all the way until now. He knows all our weaknesses. He knows all the tricks in the book, right? If he can't get to you through shar, to evil, he might try to get to you through khayr, like the brother is saying, right? How is that? How can a shaitan get to you through khayr? tiredness and tediness of the process that sometimes you get very fed up with it. Okay. So you may start, you know, totally come, you know, Sahih. That's, 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 okay. that's one way. In Allah la yamilu hatta tamil. Allah does not get tired of accepting from you until you get tired, right? So sometimes he said the shaitan will push people to extremes in worship, maybe excessively fasting, praying night without sleeping properly, not eating enough, till the person gets gives up. He's like, this is too much for me. He stops worshiping altogether. Right? That's one way. The other way is through arrogance or showing off. Right? So the people start thinking, oh, I'm so good. I pray all the time. I pray qiyam al-layl. I fast. I give sadaqah. MashaAllah. Right? And then the shaitan gets to that way. Right? Because then the person starts having kibr. Starts looking down upon other people. Starts doing some things to show off. Oh, did they see me in the front row today? Oh, did they see me come to the masjid and make salah? Oh, did they see me give me that money? Right? All that a'mal is gone because you're doing it now for other than the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaitan got through you through other tricky ways, right? You know, they say that story of that person, he was praying and then he heard some people talking about his prayer like, mashallah, that brother has a beautiful voice, he's praying so long and everything like that. And he said like, well, a sign, kadalik. He's like, he turned around and he said, I'm fasting too, right? <laughs> it's a joke people say, but you know, subhanAllah. <laughs> he lost his salah and his siyam. <laughs> so one has to be very careful to not go to extremes, do what you can do, build yourself up little by little inshallah so you never get tired of worshiping Allah, but you have a sweetness of ibadah. And also, you know, don't show off or be arrogant or have kibr like the shaitan. That will also ruin your amal. And of course, like we said, the sinfulness in general, leaving the sins to get a better heart, pure heart, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And continuously make tawbah. All of us make mistakes. Kullu ibn Adam khatta. Every child of Adam makes mistakes and sins. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones that go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to make us of the ones who repent to Him sincerely and to accept from us our good deeds. Subhanakallah bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa ta'ala.